Welcome back to BIOS 6612. Today we're going to talk more about logistic regression. Uh, and we'll cover uh, briefly the logistic regression assumptions, uh, and we'll spend some time talking about group level and subject level uh, data, as well as how to implement uh, logistic regression using data in each of those forms. So multiple logistic regression is just logistic regression with multiple covariates, just as multiple linear regression is linear regression with multiple covariates. And so we've already seen this model a couple times before, but as a refresher, we're modeling pi i, which is the probability that um, y i equals one, um, and x i beta, which is the, called the linear predictor, which is just the set of your covariates and uh, the betas that you want to estimate. And the model takes the form, the logit of pi i is equal to x beta, um, which you can transform in terms of pi. That should be a pi i, not pi. Then the general interpretation for this model is a unit increase in x j multiplies the odds by e to the beta j, um, or similarly a unit increase in xj multiplies the log odds by beta j. And there are a couple assumptions uh, associated with logistic regression, and these are different from the ones in linear regression. Uh, the first is that observations uh, y1 up to yn are independent. This one is um, one of the same ones, one of the overlapping assumptions from linear regression. Uh, the other that there is a linear relationship between the covariates x and the log odds of yi um, equals to one. So before we had a linear relationship between x and y, now we have a linear relationship between log logit probability y equals one and x. And finally, we assume that for subject i, uh, y i given x is, uh, comes from a Bernoulli distribution with the probability of success or the probability that y i equals one, that should be an equals, given x i equals x um, is pi of x i. So um, stated differently, the probability of y i equals one given a particular set of covariates for that ith individual is, is pi, and we say that's a function of xi since pi can depend uh, on the observed set of covariates. And then we all, it all, because it follows a Bernoulli distribution, it also has this variance given by um, pi times one minus pi. And two things to note about this, one, um, which I already mentioned, is that pi is a probability that is a function of the covariates. It's gonna depend on the, the covariates for this given individual. And the variance is also a function of the covariates, um, which is different from what you would see in linear regression, uh, where, where your variance is not a function of, of the covariates because that violates homodidasticity. So an important concept in logistic regression is this idea of group versus subject level data. So group level data, also called grouped data, um, has an outcome that's binary, where one indi would indicate, for example, having some disease and zero indicate having no disease. And you also have a set of predictors. However, all predictors are discrete. Um, you can't have continuous predictors. And in subject level data, on the other hand, also called ungrouped data, you also have a binary outcome where one is disease and zero is no disease, or you know those could have different meanings depending on what uh, actual, your actual data that you're looking at is. And in subject label data, you also have predictors, but you can have continuous predictors or categorical predictors at subject level data. But where things really get different between subject level and group data is in the notation. So subject level data is what we've really been working with so far in that's where yi refers to subject i uh, and their success status. So yi is equal to zero or one. 
And we assume that that takes a, a Bernoulli distribution with probability pi. Um, or we can also say that they have a binomial distribution, which we'll talk about in the next slide, um, with just one trial on the same probability pi i. Uh, on the other hand, for group level data, um, the outcome refers to the actual number of successes in the group. So if yi is binary, then we actually model the sum of the yi's for a particular group, which we'll call si. And so that's going to be some integer value where you count the number of successes. Uh, and this follows a binomial, binomial distribution where n is the total number of trials for that particular group, and pi is the probability of success on any one given trial. So I'm throwing around the binomial and Bernoulli distribution a little bit interchangeably here. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit more. And so the, binom the binomial distribution takes two parameters, n and pi. Pi is that probability that you have success on a particular trial or probability that y equals 1. And n is the number of trials. Say so you have an experiment um, that can come out like a, like a coin flip is the classic example. Um, it can be heads or tails. Let's say heads is 1 and tails is 0. Um, what happens if you uh, flip the coin 10 times? In that case, n would be equal to 10. The binomial distribution will tell you the probability of seeing, say, four heads um, in those 10 trials. And so the binomial distribution models the number of times y equals 1 in an experiment that occurs n times. And so it's related to the Bernoulli distribution in that the binomial distribution is the sum of iid Bernoulli random variables. And a binomial random variable with n equals 1, just one trial, is exactly the same as a Bernoulli random variable. So if I were to say that y um, 1 is Bernoulli with probability pi. I could equivalently say that y1 is binomial with uh, one trial, n equals one trial, and probability pi. So why do we care about this idea of group level versus subject level data? Well, there are implications for how we actually model it and test um, our models. And how we treat and test for um, model fit, for example, will not always be this exactly the same for group level versus subject level data. So I want to give you an example uh, of group level data. So group data, in group level data, um, all data can be summarized in a table form. So when you saw two by two tables uh, in one of the previous lectures, that's group level data where you have some table and then you have frequencies within that table where you might have exposure and not an exposure and then disease and no disease as outcome and covariate. Um, group level data isn't uh, limited to two by two tables, but it is limited to um, data that can be summarized in a table, meaning that you can't have any continuous covariates. So um, take, for example, a, a data set where you have some binary outcome, and then you also have two binary predictors, one which is gender, which can take on the value of male or female, another one age, which can take on the value of young or old. We're not treating age as continuous here. Then each possible set of covariates um, that you can get is called a covariate pattern. Uh, and in this case, we have one variable which takes two levels and another variable which also takes two levels, uh, which gives you a total of four covariate patterns. And I've actually written them all out here. Um, you can have gender female, age young, gender male, age young, gender female, age old, and gender male, age old. So everybody in the data set has to take on one of these four patterns. And so with group gel level data, if there are m distinct covariate patterns, 
um, for each pattern, we keep track of the number of individuals that have that pattern, which is called NJ for the MJth covariate pattern, and then the number of successes, SJ, um, that are observed within that particular subset of the data. So we can write out a likelihood for group level data, which is similar to, but slightly different from the likelihood we wrote out for individual level data or subject level data. And so assume you have M covariate patterns. And for the Jth pattern, um, the number of successes within that pattern, SJ, follows a binomial distribution where NJ is the total number of observations in that subgroup and pi j is the probability of success for any give, given observation in that group. Um, so this has a binomial distribution. So we know the PDF uh, looks like this. This is just the PDF of a binomial distribution uh, where sj is the number of successes and pi j is the probability of success for any given trial and nj is the number of trials. And then we would go ahead and um, calculate the likelihood of pi by multiplying across all of these different m groups, um, each of the covariate patterns, to get the product from j equals 1 to m of, of this PDF. And we'd say that this is proportional to um, this uh, term on the right here. And that proportionality is in terms of the parameters that you're interested in, the pi's. So those, this part of the equation doesn't depend on this n choose s term, which is why uh, we can drop the equality but use a proportion. And what's, the reason that I'm noting this is that um, this is proportional to the likelihood that you derive from subject level data. And when you actually maximize this likelihood function, you're going to take the width, a maximum likelihood estimator for your pies that's equivalent to what you would get using the subject level data. So I'm going to use an ex go through an example using some real data here of how to uh, do a logistic regression using group level data. And this is the budworm data. This data comes from an experiment on the toxicity of doses of a poison to the tobacco budworm, which is a moth that eats tobacco and other crops. So basically some farmers um, want to get rid of budworm in their crops, but they're realizing that the moth is starting to become resistant to this poison. So they want to try a couple different doses of the poison to see uh, which one is optimal for, for getting rid of the moth population. And the way this experiment was designed is that batches of 20 moths of each sex were exposed for three days to the poison, and each batch received a different dose of a poison, where there are six possible doses in all, which are listed here. Uh, the number uh, of moths in each batch that died was recorded, where success is equal to death, poor moths. And this data is grouped in the sense that we have six doses and two sexes. So m equals six times two equals 12. That's the total number of possible covariate patterns. Um, you can be male or female, and you can be in each of these different dose categories. And for each of those covariate patterns, there was 20 moths. Um, that were tested. So nj equals 20 for each of those covariate patterns. So the data that's available in this data set, the covariates that are available are our sex, where 1 is equal to male and 0 is to female. Dose, that's the milligrams of poison received. S, that's the outcome, that's the number of budworms killed and n is the total number of budworms in that particular covariate pattern. So first, we'll load in the data, and this data is available on the course website. And I'm, use, I'm uh, reading it in using the read table to function. Um, 
which is a tidyverse function. That's this here. But you can also, um, I have this commented out line of code above that uses read.table, which is a um, function from base R that you can also use to read in the text file. But either of these will, will read in uh, .txt files, and you want this called names true or header true argument. Um, and you want that because um, in this particular data set, the first row of the data are actually names of the column headers. And then everything after that is, is the actual data. So if you don't set this to true, then you're not going to capture those names of the columns, and it's going to treat that first row as part of your actual uh, data set. So just printing out the first couple observations from this data, uh, this shows you the different covariates you have. And this obs column, that's just sort of like the row number. So that's not actually useful for us, though you could think of that as the sort of number to identify each covariate pattern. So the co the, for the first covariate pattern, uh, those are females um, who received a dose of one milligram. And you can see in this group, there was one success, meaning one moth death in 20 total moths. And going down a little farther, the third covariate pattern is also a group of females, but these are females who received four milligrams. And in this group, you see that there are nine deaths in, for 20 total moths. And overall, this uh, data set has a total of 12 rows. Um, and the number of rows here is equal to the number of groups, meaning the number of covariate patterns in the data. So I first like, I always like to sort of look at my data and make plots of it before I start to model it. So I made a couple plots of the budworm um, data here. EDA stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. And uh, what I did is I calculated the proportion of budworms killed at each dose by just dividing those successes, SJ, divided by NJ, which is just 20 for everyone in the group. Um, and that gives you the proportion of budworms killed. I plotted this as a function of the, um, the dose in milligrams. And then I also faceted it by, uh, by sex. So you can have a separate plot for the male and the female uh, budworms. And you can see both for the males and the females as your dose increases, um, the proportion of budworms kills increases. And that for the females, at each level of the poison, you have a higher proportion that's killed for the females than for males, all the way up to 100% um, for the highest dose for females. And you only have about 80% for the highest dose for males. So to actually model this budworm data, we use a GLM statement. Um, that's the generalized, stands for generalized linear model. It's the GLM version of LM, which you used in 6611. Um, I'll talk more about actual modeling in R in a later lecture. Um, but here we're binding together the number of successes and the number of failures, um, these two columns, and regressing against sex and uh, dose as covariates in the model. And you choose a binomial link because uh, we assume this follows a binomial distribution, um, and the data is the budworm data. So that actually runs the model, which produces your estimates and confidence intervals and p-values and things like that. And then um, I like this uh, function tidy from the broom package because it allows you to take things like uh, a linear model or a GLM and it put and it pulls out all of your um, terms, the, uh, your estimates, and your p-values and puts them into a nice data frame. Uh, so that's what I've done here. And again, I'm not going to talk about the interpretation or the confidence intervals uh, just yet, but this allows you, this piece of code here allows you to run a model um, for logistic regression when your data is in grouped format. Now I'm going to show an example when you have subject level data as well. And unfortunately, it looks like 
the slide got just a little bit cut off here, but that's okay. Um, so in this example, a study was conducted to identify the risk factors for low infant birth weight using data from 189 live births at the Bay State Medical Center in Massachusetts. Um, and the data comes from the file lowbwt.csv, uh, which is available on the class website and has the following variables. First ID, that's just the ID number for an infant in this data set. Low, which is the outcome variable, which is one for low birth weight, um, which is less than 2,500 grams versus zero, uh, not low birth weight, which is greater than or equal to 25 grams. Another variable, which is covariate of interest, is smoke, which is a binary available indicating whether or not the mother smoked during pregnancy, one being yes, zero being no. Then age is the mother's age in years when she gave birth. And then visits, which is a categorical variable um, for the number of physician visits during the first trimester, where you can only take on the values of zero for no visits, one for one visit, or two for two or more physician visits. Uh, and because age is a continuous covariate, this data cannot be summarized um, into a table at the group level, which is why it's subject level data. And so I'm going to run, a, let's say in, the researchers are interested in understanding how mother's age and smoking status influences probability of low birth weight. Um, that's what we're going to model. So this is a CSV file, so you can read in the CSV using the read underscore CS function from CSV function from the reader package. Uh, I'm calling this data set low, both low underscore birth weight. Um, I'm just going to print it out so that you can see. Um, and yeah, this is a, uh, this data set has these variables I, I, I talked about in the previous slide. Uh, and there's actually a total of 189 uh, rows in this data set. Like there are 189 subjects. So in this case, because it's subject level of da level data, the number of rows is equal to the number of subjects. And the way that you go about modeling this data um, is just the outcome itself, zero or one, against the covariates that you're interested in. Again, indicating that you have a binomial family um, and again, you can pull out the estimates and the p-values using the broom tidy function. And we're gonna talk about um, confidence intervals and hypothesis testing and um, some elements of model selection in the next lecture.